Hello. Hello, everyone. And um, I'm here tonight to do a live chat with a couple of the readers of my book, uh, my first release, Excuse Me, I'm Toxic. And we're just going to, um, we're not going to dive right into it. I'm going to give uh, the first reader an opportunity to come on in. Uh, so that we can start talking about this book. Excuse me. I'm toxic. And, um, Brad, I'm trying to bring you on, but if for some reason it's saying that I can't bring you on camera at this time. If you don't have my book, you can get it at, ex uh, not excuse me, you can get it at lesliepace.org. That's lesliepace.org. And it's a good book. A lot of people have gotten a lot of good feedback, a lot of good reviews. And um, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm happy about it because it's actually something very new and very different for me. Hi, Tony. How are you? Do you have the book yet? Hi, Daphne. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> um, Brad, I see that you're watching, but um, I can't add you for some reason. So I can't talk to you because I can't add you. Yes. Hi. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I am well. Now I, I know you I met you years ago as Brad, but how do I pronounce your name? Um, actually, it's Bradford Andreco, but when I started writing and publishing, I changed it to Anderico, but it's still Brad. It's still Brad. <laughs> <laughs> well, will you tell uh, where are you uh, calling in from? I'm from Jack, well, I'm from Waynesboro, but I live in Jackson, Mississippi now. Awesome. Well, yeah. we're just going to dive right into this book. Now, let me tell you, this is my first book, and let me... Tonight we were in Bible study and my pastor was talking about using what's in your hand. And I shared my testimony because what I thought, I only, I only thought I had this one thing in my hand and that was my voice to sing. And not really that God has also given me a voice, um, an opportunity, rather a gift to write as well. So I was, um, and we were talking about when you start using those gifts and you place those gifts in God's hand, he gives you some unusual return. And I was, I mentioned how I did a single uh, uh, some years ago and I got a whole bunch of still sitting over there in the closet, but I put out this book that I didn't think was so much and I can't keep it in because um, this is what God has given me to do. And I didn't even realize it. So Brad, let's talk about this book. So okay. tell me, just tell me your first impression of the book. My first impression of the book, I love the book. Okay. Honestly, I love it. I said that when I first received the book, I was so happy when I got out the mailbox. And I had a lot of other things to do. And I said I was going to start the book and probably finish it, you know, later on during mm -hmm. that week because I had everything going on. But when I got the book and I started reading it and I was sitting on the couch, I couldn't put it down. I had, I was chapter to chapter to chapter. I just had to go through the book because your book is more of a conversation, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It allowed me to, after each chapter, it allowed me to reflect on everything that I had been through in my life and all the different decisions that I had made in my life to make me basically get rid of my 
toxins that I had that I did not know that they were toxins. And that's what I appreciated about the book so much. And it, it was just, it was, it was, it was an eye opener because it allowed me to see things that I had been through in my life that I did not know were toxins. Wow. You mentioned uh, talking about, um, I, I, to I told you that what I posted on Facebook that uh, one of my favorite chapters were uh, Pigs and the Pearls. I, I, okay. I may be stating it wrong. <laughs> pigs don't wear pearls. That's the chapter. Pigs don't wear pearls. And I thought about the relationship, the two relationships that I've been in my life. And you giving your all to people mm -hmm. and they just trample over you. Mm -hmm. And they're not receiving the gifts that you are bringing to them. Mm -mm. Pigs don't wear pearls. And I hate to call my exes pigs, but they are. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, so it, I get it, though. I, I get it. I was in a, a relationship, and um, I, I can say that, too. And I'm not calling him a pig but I'm just saying the way he wasn't ready to receive what I had he, he couldn't right. even understand what I was giving him because of where he was I'm giving him right. all of this and he couldn't even understand it because and therefore it's like putting a steak in uh you know a prime rib in front of uh, a one-month-old baby they have no idea what to do with it they, they're, they're right. gonna keep it because they just want the milk they, they, they can't do anything with it yeah. so yeah got you so, and, and it, what is the other part? The other parts that I liked about the book, I love the, at the end of each chapter, the prayers. And some of the prayers that you wrote hit home so, so much. I'm like, Lord, okay, this is a revelation for me because you and I have been talking about some things. Mm -hmm. And this is just a revelation. So here we go. And I, I, I'm hard-headed. I'm not going to lie. I'm, in three months, I'll be 40 years old. What? And a lot of things I've been... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we met a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a lot of things that I'm still growing in. It's a lot of things that I'm still learning about myself. Um, you see, I wrote my notes, and I got them right here. Um, oh, please. Please read them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first one that I wrote, you cannot, you cannot be afraid to disconnect from people, places, or things that you are that are poisoning in your life. That's on page three of your book. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we get so comfortable in situations that we don't, we're, we're afraid to move out and find out who we are as ourselves because we got to please this person. We got to please our family. We got to please the church. We got to do this. We got to do that. And we're afraid to move out. And sometimes you can feel God pushing you out and you still scared to do it. Mm -hmm. You're still scared to do it. And that was, that was my biggest struggle. One of my biggest struggles. That was okay. one of my biggest struggles. And because okay. I, I I want to please my family, but I know I'm being pushed. Okay, God, I need you to tell me this. I need you to sit right beside me and tell me this is what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. And you know I'm from a small town of Wayne County, Buckatana, Mississippi. Buckatana. <laughs> <laughs> Buckatana. And I was afraid at first to leave my family. I really was, and uh, here it is, years later. I, I know now that I can still keep in touch with my family, but I still can do what it is for me to do. Mm -hmm. And that, that was the scary part. Yeah, um, that's what this book, this, my, this book was bur basically birthed out of some of those same thoughts, because I am in a very strong, uh, closely knit family, and mm -hmm. I come a family that you know, and I'm not, I'm I'm stretching it a little, but you know, are we gonna have toast or 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 cornbread today? Well, let's pray about it. It was you know everything was let's pray about it, and if one person gave a word that no 
it's not toast tonight, it is cornbread, then regardless of if I wanted cornbread, we're not going to have cornbread because the Lord said toast and it came from this person. So I had to disconnect from my family to a degree and everybody has to, you know, it's, this, this is nothing different or nothing um, unusual because even though you're born in families, God still have a purpose for you as an individual. I sing with eight other sisters, but still there's a song for me that is just a solo in me. And uh, and I had to realize that, that there was a solo in me, that my life was not a group, but there was a solo in me and that I had things that I needed to do. Um, I talk about in this book that, um, can you, excuse me, can you move that? I have to prepare, mm -hmm. for, I have to make room for my future. And I had to make room, I had to move, uh, the pay sisters to a particular place and make them an extension of me. No shade, because we all, we've all done it. Made an extension of me, and they were not my totality. They were not everything, because at some point, one point in my life, Brad, they were everything, and everybody else that's listening, sometimes we make people or our family or the first uh, thing of ministry, the first life that we're 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 introduced to we make that our all and our completion but that's just your beginning and you can't make things that are your beginning everything it's just that the beginning you can't win the race at standing staying at the start of the line you must get on that track and run to the finish line that you have to and it's not in the, it's not the same place so you have to move so the pace is the anointed pace sisters the the singing group was my start that was the beginning of it but i went on to do uh disney and you know some you know they wrote an article about me leslie pace you can google it leslie pace of the anointed pace sister embraces satanic rituals at disney you know well i read the article one of my cast members brought it to me i was like okay well can you pass me that makeup because i have a show to do yeah, when I got to the place where I knew what God had for me and it had nothing to do with what anybody else thought, I was better. I was a better person. And that's what this is about. Okay, because that was what I was about to ask you. When you stepped out from the gospel family group mm -hmm. and went to Disney, how did you feel about that? Were you afraid or were you just moving in your space? I honestly... I was turning, um, I was, I was 39 and mm -hmm. I wanted, I wanted to do something else. I wanted to do more. And we had just signed with Ty Scott records and, you know, thank God that, that was a, that was a good thing, but that wasn't, that wasn't, that was a thing for the pay sisters. That was a good thing for Leslie Pace that is part of the group, but that was not a mm -hmm. thing for me. And so when I stepped out and went to Disney, I was actually elated. I was so mm -hmm. happy. You know, I almost forgot to pack because I was so happy. I was so ready. I was ready for what I what 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 God had for me next. Even though it was not traditional, I was not going to be a minister of music at somebody's church. I was <clears throat> not going to, you know, be a preacher or something at somebody's church. I was going to be a principal singer at a at a park and Disney Park and Jesus was not nowhere in there. You know, we didn't that, that it was not a church. So I was fine with it because I have always been the person, a person that would do something different, you know. So when I did that, I was fine. But was my family okay with it? I don't think I didn't think anything about it. Are you Froze. About it? Are you, you, am I back? Yeah, you're back. You're back. Most of them cheered me on and they were very happy about uh, what I was doing. Um, my mother prayed. My mother was like, "Yeah, <laughs> you know, she raised us to be do everything in the church." You know, she wanted us to do everything in the church, and I, everything was not. You know, it was not for me in the church. Somebody asked me, Brad, the other day, "Well, are you going to get married?" Um, I don't know, because you know, if I get married and the guy is a preacher, <laughs> I'm like, I'm I don't have to go. Right. When I stepped out and went to um to 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 be who God had called me to be. Now, if God is moving my cheese and saying that this is where you're going next, then I'll go there. But right now, 
Mm. No. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> and, and you did. And you did. You really did. Because I'm kind of in the same spot. I can remember when I was about 13, 14 years old. And I told my grandmother sitting in her kitchen that I wanted me and my three kids. I just wanted me and my three kids. I don't know why three kids. And she, <laughs> she was like, well, you got to get married. You got to do this and all this kind of stuff. I don't want to be married. Okay. I don't, I don't want to. I've done it. It lasted five years. We split. We moved on. Um, now I'm in the process, and I have never told anybody. It's only like two or three people that knows this. But I've, I've started my adoption process. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> I've started that. I'm waiting, I'm waiting on um, my papers from the state. And that's it. I, that's the route I want to go. That's, that's it. So that goes to the part of my book where it says, can you move that? I need to make room for my future. Because a lot, yeah, because a lot of times things are good. And Disney was a good thing for me. But I realized mm -hmm. that when, when that time ended, that God was making room for another part of my life, another part of my future. And sometimes we get locked into things. And because they're good things, we'll stay there forever. And we'll never grow. We're really live out to the, the fullness that God had intended us for to live because we're in, we're locked in good places and good places are good places, but you know, they're not always the place where God will have you to be. So you have to be, and we, get, and, we, and we get so comfortable in being a place that when we're comfortable in certain situations, mm -hmm. we are, we get complacent and get afraid to move. And you get, you, you start thinking to myself, okay, is this me? Is, is this Brad saying you need to move or is this God saying you need to move? You start questioning. Mm -hmm. what, what, what is this voice? Because there have been times in my life I'm like, Lord, I need you to sit right there in that couch right there and tell me, Brad, do this. It, right. it, it's been so scary in my life because I don't want to make the wrong moves. And I tell God, I want to stay in your will. And that's what I love about your book. Your book is not preachy. You're not like, you know, I grew up missionary Baptist. You know the church I grew up in. Yes. And not, no, like you say, no shade to anybody down there. But you grew up Baptist. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. And once I finally broke away from it, not talking about any, anybody that's watching this. I'm not trying to spread shade or anything like this. But once I broke away from it and started studying for myself and started living for myself, I saw, okay, I'm good. And then when I had that communion with God, that, that time is just us, five hours during that day, I'm good. I'm good. I'm not going to allow anybody else to dictate my life, what I need to do, what I can do, what I can't do. Right. And after all these years, I've been doing this, doing this, doing this. And I see, when I first went into the ministry, Leslie, in 1994, I had a cousin that invited me to go skating. And another cousin told me that I could not go skating because I was a preacher. Oh, yeah, I know about those things. Yeah. I'm like, what harm is that going to do? I'm just skating. Mm -hmm. What is that? So I'm like, wow. And and it's just, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. So I'm in, a, when I, <laughs> I moved here, one of my family members, I'm not going to say who, make sure you find you a good Baptist church. Why? And, and this is just me. This is my opinion. This is my life. I'm mm -hmm. like, why? Because, you know, because da da da, da. Mm -mm. I'm in a non-denominational church, right? Well, multi-denominational church right now. So I'm, I'm living my life. I'm happy. I'm content. And I feel that when God get ready, if I do something wrong that's out of his will, he's going to convict me and tell me, okay, Brad, look, stop. That ain't, that ain't you. That's not for you. I need you to go here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. 
And another chapter of your book, um, your roots are showing when you started outgrowing a place. I outgrew my hometown. I outgrew it. And it was time for me to grow because you get to a point to where people are holding, a pigeon holding you. You can't grow because you got to do this a certain way. You got to do that a certain way. And that's like here in Jackson. Now, I've been here since 2007, and this is 2017. It's time for me to move. I, 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 I'm, it's time for me to go. And I told God, I don't want to step out of your will. Mm -hmm. if this happens, and he knows what I talked to him about. I'm ready to move. Mm -hmm. But if it does, I know it's not for me to move at this time. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people, um, we allow ourselves to be trapped into places and, it's, and we don't realize that we're trapped in, in them until we got actually allow us to experience other things. And we realize that, okay, I need to, I'm bigger than this. I'm better than this. And sometimes when you move away from people, Brad, and those of you that are watching, when you move away from people that you love and that love you, they have a tendency to think that you're moving away because you think you're better. No, I don't think I'm better. I'm just going to do this. And if you, if you see that I think I'm better, then you might need to check you because your toxins are causing you to see me <laughs> on light. I'm just, you know, I'm just going here to be better. You know, just th th this is where I'm, I'm not being better than you is making me a better person. And there's a difference when I say I'm I'm a better person. And when I say I am better than you, two different things. And sometimes when you leave the group, the, the, that little group, whatever group you're in, they, 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 they think that you think that you're better than them. So in your opinion, why do you think some people are afraid to move out of that comfort zone? I think some people are. I, I think some people like being in that com in that zone where they are. Not, I'm not sure if it's a comfort zone because I think sometimes people are in places and they're stuck in places and they like being in those places because for some they are uh, the big fish in a small pond. So they don't want to go to another place where there are other people that are just as good. But you know the Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron. So they will never be sharp. They will always be dull because they are they are just this little razor blade you know and yeah. in this little, in this little in, in this little pack and every, you think you're wonderful but you need to get out there with some real swords and, and 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 really become who God has called you to be but you so you're not afraid some of them are not afraid they just don't want to they don't just don't want anybody else they don't want to move to another place where they will be small in their eyes and have to start all over again when i left my brother's church and went and in and, and came to hensley I didn't go. I didn't come to Hensley as the pastor's sister. I was not a part of the pastor's family. I was just, if you will, a regular person. And I'm saying that because in church we have a tendency to make people that are related to the pastor something like royalty, and almost make the pastor like the king. That's how we do it sometimes, and I think we do it without thinking. But anyway, I went to Hensley, and I wasn't that person. I just came in as Leslie. And that's, that's, that was the thing that helped me change the most because people are not sitting there scrutinizing me over, okay, you can't go skating because you're the pastor's sister. Or you can go skating, but you can't skate more than one one time because you're the pastor's sister or you, you're in the pastor's family or you're the pastor's, uh, you're related to the pastor. But I was able to move to Hensley and really become what God had me, wanted me to be because I was just me. Mm -hmm. I, I was me. And and nobody required of me other than to be just who I am. Just who I am. Let me read this part of the book. It says, can you move that? I need room for my future. If we're just meant if we're just maintaining our lives, we're not truly growing the way God intended. I heard these words at a conference and they stirred my soul. I began to think about it. Everything about God as it relates to us, is that he wants us to be holy, to love him, love one another, be creative, be fruitful, and multiply. That is what he has placed, and multiply the things that he has placed in our hands. This thought troubled me. I could not rest. I tried to dismiss it, but the truth of, the, of it urged me to prayer. So I prayed, and I talked to him. I talked to God about it, and he said nothing to me, 
because what because I wanted because I want my life to reflect his will. So I asked him, I said, how can I get the success to be manifested in my life? How can I get this expected in God that I keep reading about, that people keep reaching or preaching about? How do I get this expected in manifested in my life? Later that week, I felt an urge to purchase a dry erase weekly gold calendar, a vision board for my office. And I did. The items laid on my desk for a day or so. I walked into my office and was trying to find a space to place it to place my weekly goals on it and my vision board, and I could not find a place on the wall. Then he finally broke his silence. God started talking to me. And he said, if you take down that Disney cast poster from your past, then you can place your vision board, your future in that place. Okay. <laughs> in my family, we would have called that a read. Yep, God read me because I was so fixated on, even though I was no longer there, I still had all of these relics that was, was reminding me of what I had. And it was really wonderful. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I love it. When I moved to Florida, I was never back. that. Actually, you talk about going to a different church. When I moved to Florida, I visited the Kojic churches, but I went to Zachary Tim's church. Thankfully, yeah. I was there at 7 a.m. on Sunday mornings, faithfully. Because I was, you know, I had shows to do, but I not only did I have shows to do, it was just the way they did service. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a whole bunch of other stuff. So, yeah. and I loved it there, but just because I loved it there didn't mean that you know God didn't have something else for me. He had some better things for me. And now, now that I released it and let it go, I'm seeing all these other amazing things that he had for me, but I couldn't get to them until I removed my past, until I removed all of those monuments that I had built to my past. They were great things. It's like having a Grammy and just sitting there holding it. Well, are you going to do something else? Are you going to do something else? Or are you just going to look at that trophy that you have? Or, you know, so I had to remove my trophies and the things of my past, the things that told me, oh, you've done a good job. Yeah, and but you have to get to the place where you say, yes, I've done a good job, but God, what is my name? Because if Moses had thought he had a good job when he first went to see Pharaoh and just threw that rod and turned to a snake, I've done a good job. You know, we think about it. the water has turned to blood and all of these frogs, locusts, and all of this. We don't have to do that because, but, you know, we God showed us a sign in Egypt, but there was more. There was something for the greater for them. And that's what we realize that even though God shows us good things, and he gives us good places, there are still some better places. Better places, yes. No, that was some guys dating. Well, I was my guy. They dated two guys. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. That, that's, a, that's a mess. We're not going to talk about that. Uh, but, you know, and I was dating, and I was like, oh, God, he is all of that. Oh, Lord. And then we broke up. I was like, oh, God, I'm not gonna, I can't live. I can't do it. I can't do it. But then the, when the next came, I was like, oh, good. What? You mean to tell me I was crying over that when this is here? And that's, we can kind of compare what we think is the greatest thing that has ever happened to us. We think we're living it now, but you're not. God has some greater things for you. You know, you think it's amazing. Yeah, it is. Enjoy it. But don't get locked there. You need to put the past in the past for today and today because today doesn't fit into tomorrow. You know? So, and, and sometimes we get afraid. Like, you just... <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about and that, that brings me to the chapter frozen oh okay let me go there sometimes we get we get frozen in positions we get frozen in positions um hold on no go back and when you get to a place where people are talking and okay um uh, well it's a little this it's it you wrote uh well it's a little like a bee sting. The bee isn't so sorry for its action. As a matter of fact, it feels justified in their stinging. That's people that we all know. Mm -hmm. I sting you. I hurt you. I'm justified. But Brad is hurt because of your sting, of, of that person's sting. Um, but you are going to allow the stinger to remain in your body and do more harm. How foolish to say until the bee comes and remove the stinger. The stinger is going to stay there. You are the one that's suffering. Remove it. 
Remove that pain. Get it out of your way. It's just there temporarily. Get it out of your way. Move on with life. Our situations that we think are permanent, it's just a moment in time. And we got to we got to deal with it and we got to grow from it. And that was one of the hardest things for me to do is to deal with it and grow from it. Because I always felt that it's just me. No one is going to care. It's, I got to deal with this. I got to find a way to deal with it. The first relationship that I was in, it lasted nine years. And I'm about to say something that I've never told a lot of people, especially my family, because I just saw their name pop up on this timeline. Yeah, they're saying hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. The relationship, we was together for nine years. And the relationship got abusive. And I'm talking about physical. And we we had good times, we had bad times. And I felt like I'm in this I'm in this little circle that there's no one else right here is gonna understand me. We've been together for this amount of time. Just deal with it. For me, stupid. For me, mm -hmm. just stupid. I was in 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 my, in my mind. I was frozen in that time, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until Brad, you better than that. Mm -hmm. You got other things outside of this county, that county, and that county. Move on, move move and it wasn't until one of my former principals said and she called me she was like i got a job for you okay didn't know what the job was okay and that was that that was it wow move. that was it i didn't take a ch i didn't ask questions i was, okay i'm ready i'm ready and Sometimes i, I People say, not, I'm not going to say sometimes, whenever you know that it's time for your life to change and God gives you those urgings. And I'm not talking about, like I said, I told somebody the other day, I'm not talking about that uh, voice that you hear on the Ten Commandments. <laughs> he just speaks to you. You know that, you know what I, I'm, put a pen there. One of the, the most um, practical ways that I could explain hearing God's voice is in this movie, that Julia Roberts is in, Eat, Eat Pray, Eat, Love. Mm -hmm. That, I, I promise you, I've always heard him like that. It, it, when she's on the floor and she's crying and he says to her, get up. I mean, God doesn't say thee, thou, and all of that to me. He just talks to me and I know it's him. And uh, so uh, that, is, uh, that is one of the things that we should learn to is just hear his voice and follow his voice. Um, Somebody is asking, how do I get this book? You can order the book on lesliepace.org, or you can do something even better. You can bring my tour to your church. Oh. And, uh, my tour is a tour of one, and uh, I will come to your church, and we'll be in worship together. And afterwards, we can sit and talk and sign, and you all can get this great book, that um, and get these great words. Yeah, they're great words, because they came from the insp Inspired by God. Um, well, let me ask you this. You say that the words were inspired by God. What manifested in you to go ahead and put them on paper and share the words? They, I was. We talked about this tonight in Bible study. I did a vlog um, on um, a vlog of, in 2013. And you could buy people's uh, manuscripts. What is it? It's not called manuscripts. It's called, it's, it's called something else. I can't think of the word. But you can buy it or you can download it. And um, I noticed that some of my uh, vlogcasts were being downloaded. And then not only did I notice that, I noticed that um, I saw somebody with a book out. And I went and read the, the intro to their book. And the intro to their book was one of my vlogs. And I said, "Self, you have something here. Maybe you need to write. And uh, a young lady named Carletta Edwards said to me, there's a book in you. I said, 
I know it's on my vlog show. So I, that's how I, I knew. Uh, I knew, I just didn't know because it's, oh, I woke up and I, I had the inspiration and I knew that I could write. No, yeah. I how other people were, was responding. And then I got the confirmation through through that as well. And I just went on and did it and took a chance on it. And I, like I said earlier, I am getting a better response out of a book than I, had, than I do when I sing. And that's interesting to me because I watched a video uh, the other day at Bible study. I like our Bible studies at my church. And uh, our pastor showed us a video about who moved my cheese. And Brad, that is really what, because I realized that the cheese that I was, that I was sitting there waiting for to come back, that it was not com coming back. And all I had was the residue of it and the smell of it, but I didn't have anything. So uh, I started moving through that little, if you haven't watched it, you can go on YouTube and get a quick version of it. I started yeah. and um, I started moving through my maze and trying to find my cheese. And I think I found a problem or something right here. <laughs> So do you think there will be a part two to the book, a sequel, I, or second edition? I, actually, I am in the process of writing the second one. And okay. um, excuse me, I'm toxic, though. So that'll be out uh, next year at some point. And um, I'm going to keep doing it until until uh, I can't do it anymore. So Let's how did you come up? Because when you first put on Facebook that you were releasing the book, and uh, you, you know, I, I'm going to follow you. You know, I'm a fan of Leslie Renee Pace. You know I am. And when I first saw, <laughs> I first saw the uh, title, Excuse Me, I'm Toxic. And I'm, I'm used to celebrities writing their memoirs and their books and all this kind of stuff. Because I, I had Sean's book. Okay. And I let, I let my Aunt Joyce read it. Joyce and is watching. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, she let Alicia watch it. I mean, Alicia read it. And that was the end of it. Okay. So I'm 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 faulting Alicia because I don't know where my book is at right now. But um uh, uh, I forgot where I was going. Because I started you, thinking about my book. You, the artists and people writing their memoirs, and you, you probably yeah. thought that it was and, and something about me. And, yeah. And my, it is about me, but it's not talking about my life and things that I've gone through and things that I've been through. I think it, it, it talks about my life, but it talks more about the lessons that I learned. Mm -hmm. I'm The only way you know the details of what I've been through is that you know me and we sit there talking one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not going right. to put that in. Ever. Got you. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Ever. Got you. And see, that's kind of like my books. I call them my fictional autobiographies. Mm -hmm. They they about me, but they're not about me. You know, it's okay. it's some for my eyes, it's some falsehood in there somewhere. And another oh. thing that I noticed, huh? I said okay. <laughs> another thing I noticed is the color red. Is that an um? This is that a uh is, is, anything behind the red color? Is there anything behind this redness? Yes. Um, on one, a couple of your videos you had on a red sweater when you were talking about the book. And I'm like, what is the red? Honestly, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. There's no, no significance to it at all. Okay. There's no okay. significance to it at all. I thought the red looked better. Okay. <laughs> I wanted a white cover, and I just thought the red would look better. And... Um, I'm gonna be honest the second time. I think I'm cute and red. So I okay. I, I, I read. <laughs> so and you are. I, I get a lot of, I get a lot of compliments in red. So I'm always, you know, I have a lot of red in my closet. Red, burgundies, you know. So um oh no. somebody said Brad, you are the most brilliant minded descendant of the late Mr. Clinton Bell because of your inheritance of greatness. You were picked out to be picked on. Tanette Yates, you know Miss Yates. Yeah, is that, that a is my yeah, that's my mom's baby sister. Hi, baby sister. Well, I, we're gonna bring this to a close, and I I just wanted to talk to some. Um, next week I'll be talking to somebody else, 
uh, about the book. And uh, this week I talked to somebody that I knew. And I, I've known Brad for a, for a long time. But next week, I'm going to pull somebody that uh, ordered the book and um, that I don't know. Because I, um, I'm going to go back and forth between people I know and people I don't know. And uh, yay! <laughs> and, uh, I've, I've been asked, well, who is that on the cover? Actually, I met uh, this model uh, at um, Disney when I was doing the shows at Disney. And uh, she's on, she's an amazing uh, singer and entertainer. Uh, her name is Virginia Roebuck and she's amazing. And um, I wanna say thank you because uh, she did this and she's making my book look really good. And I was asked, well, why aren't you on the cover? Because that's, you know, uh, once again, I'm not a church author, so I don't need to have my face on my cover. I want the world to touch you, not my face. And the words did touch. The words are, I'm, I, I'm, I'm speaking for me. The words touch. When you are reading this book, you are having a conversation with, Leslie's giving a conversation with you. And for me, I'm having a conversation back with the book. I was, I was sitting right there in that corner of my couch, and I'm talking to the book. And then I start realizing, okay, I'm talking to God because I started reminiscing on things that I've been through, things that I want to go through. And God, I need you to do this. Okay. And then when Leslie starts saying, well, you start writing the prayers and you're reading the prayers. And I'm like, okay, this is the same thing I said in the middle of the chapter of the book. And the book is a very easy read. Mm -hmm. You're going to read this book and you cannot put it down. That's what because everybody I, When I was reading, I, when I first got the book and I got it out of my mailbox, I was like, okay, I'm happy to get my book. I'm excited to get my book. I finally got my book. And then I knew everything on my schedule that I had to do. Okay, I got to do this, do this, do this. I finished some things out the way. Okay, I finished that later. I'm going to start on the book now. When I finished reading that book, your book, I'm like, wow. I couldn't put it out. I could not stop and start another day. You, you can't, For me, you can't stop and start another day because you got to find out, okay, what else is it about me that I need to know? It's, it's a revelation. It's a conversation between the book and God. And these are your words, but it's a conversation. It's a conversational piece. And if any book club that is out there watching that, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. And I'm not saying this because this is Leslie Pace. I'm saying this from experience of the book. It is experience of the book. Seriously. I enjoyed the book and I thank you for the book because for me, honest to God, it was a revelation and a confirmation on some things that I had planned for 2018. It's a confirmation. And letting toxic people go, and people that I thought, people that I thought were my friends. What did what did you say? The observers and friends. Mm -hmm. It's 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 time to let those observers go. I can't yeah. deal with them anymore. I and can't that deal with them. that 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 whole thing is it's so easy to get toxic. It is so easy, and a lot of people are walking around toxic and don't even realize it, and don't they're saying. It. I am. That's just who I am. And that's not who you are. You know, yep. that's not who you are. Get rid of the toxins and this will help you. You can get my book, LesliePace.org, and I will sign it and um send it send it to you. A lot of people have uh a couple of people told me what to put in their book. I was like, Really? I don't know you. You are not my best friend. No. <laughs> <laughs> and but, um, and she does sign it. Yeah. I did. I did sign it. And um, I appreciate everybody that has been so uh, positive about it. I've gotten some negative feedback. And I was, you know, my sister Belinda said, when I told her, she was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. I was like, Belinda, what are you doing? She said, I'm trying to care. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've got to use that. You know, she said, when people come and say negative things about what you're doing and what you're offering, she said, don't even, don't even find the space in your life to care about it. Yeah. Just look. Okay, thank you, and go on. And I've learned to say, 
okay, thank you, and go on. But lesliepace.org. Hi, Flip. I love you. lesliepace.org. And if you want this book, I'll send it to you tomorrow. I will send it to you yeah. tomorrow. Brad, thank you for joining me. Thank you for thank you. being part of this journey in my life. And uh, I look forward to great things coming forward for you. And congratulations on uh, the adoption process. And I pray that you will follow God's path for you. Nobody's path, you. but God's path. He said he knows the plans he has for you. So, you know, sometimes we confuse them with people's plans. But God has a plan. Find his plan and follow that. God bless you all. Leslie Pace. Flip, order my book. LesliePace.org. And um, talk to you all next week um, at right. some point. Bye. <laughs>